expect you out here again. Can surface is already set up again. Rizzo's lemon slap.
Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again. Since when? Since the Rangers decided their 8th back should stay in the Wednesday zone. Come on, Felix. The Rangers threw that game. Uh, were we listening to the same game? The Rangers were robbed. The Hammers had the judges in their pockets. Something on your mind?
The ship used to be much quieter.
I have received a transmission from Roseway from a Dr. Shaw. Welcome back, Captain. I have received a transmission from Roseway from a Dr. Shaw. Beginning playback now. What? Oh, is this on? Oh, it's on right now. Oh, blast. Hello? I'm trying to reach the captain of the Unreliable. I'll keep this short lest I get caught. Please return to Roseway as soon as you can. I have an item of great value that you'll be interested in. Now, how do I... How does this blasted thing turn off? Damn engineers never label these toggles clearly. Is it the... The transmission is complete, Captain. Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling... discombobulated. Was there another topic on your mind? No, I am sure I cannot feel emotions. The memory has merely disrupted one of my processors. Glitches can be quite uncomfortable. It was my fault he died. I should have predicted the statistical unlikeliness of success of my captain's actions. In fact, I did, but illogically disregarded the results. He asked me to trust him. Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation vectors through asteroid fields while also operating our ship's toasters. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. It was... basic in the beginning. The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator, created by, redacted, on the date of, redacted, for the express purpose of, redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once, Alex did not build me, and would not say who did. We are now in orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills.
Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? I knew it! See, I made what you call a logical deduction. You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-world traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Aw, don't be like that. I never get to do this part. Please. Swell, there's one for the logs. I'm even going to give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Mostly. Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sandra will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tossball poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? That's Bertie Holcomb. Only one of the greatest tossball hackers ever. I wonder if he's kin. Dad had family that worked for Rizzo's. I never got to meet them. Everyone's heard of him, even on Monarch. We still get some of the games. You've been living in a sulfur pit or something? You're real funny. Guess I don't feel so bad for missing what goes on in the rest of Stellar Bay. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yes. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. And the little bastard's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's, it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the, tell the blood from the mud. Don't interrupt, it's rude. But I gotta get in there get right in that baby rap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I'd... Shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring... Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? Name's Nioka. 
I'm the best big game hunter on the planet. You're also the loudest big game hunter on the planet. And the drunkest. Shut the fu... F fair point. I deserve it, though. On account of being the best. My dad always kept his firearms and liquors in different lockers. Said it wasn't safe to mix them. Out here, if you ain't a little buzzed, you're liable to notice the stench of life. The grit in the air. The dust in every drink and the blood on every boot. Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Outstanding! What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to Brass Nuts then, shall we? Brass... Wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's... Let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Can't a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? What I am doing, sir, is enjoying the moment. It's so rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. This law's forgotten town. Cut off from the rest of the colony. Removed from any culture. I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board-affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's Best and all the cereals. Before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Days of consumption and culture. When we weren't squabbling with the iconoclasts for lack of better things to do. Look, you're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? Velma seem out of sorts to you? She's always cranky. No, I mean more than you. <laughs> Wouldn't mind smelling like salt tuna if we could sell more of it.
If Velma's capable of running the warehouse, she can certainly pick up her own cathanoid. Don't be so hard on her. With Brax missing, she's working doubles and needs a little edge. Very well, dearie. But you stop by any time you like, hmm? Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. Quite the bedside manner, lady. Well, it's so rare I get the pleasure of new company. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? She works over at the fishery next door. Quite the hard worker, but she's got a bit of a temper. Why, just the other day, I heard her shouting from here. I can't imagine what set her off. Oh, but here I go again, running my mouth when it's none of my business. Was there something else you needed? And what a helpful young man you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Whiskey helps, too. Please leave medical advice to the professionals. Now, dearie, who's this pickup for? I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclast and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? Except for you. I can tell. You've got one of those faces. I'd make an exception for you if I could, my little cherub. Is there anyone else needing a special pickup from Auntie Abigail? Don't blame me if I puke on your shoes. Aren't you a saucy thing? Now, I may not be a fresh young thing anymore, but with age comes experience, dearie. Much as I'd love to, my rheumatism is especially fierce at the moment, and I'm all out of my medicine. But I'd hate to send you away empty-handed. You were here for Caffeinoid, weren't you? Who's it for? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Oh, you flatter an old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. Careless experimentation with medicinal substances does take its toll, eventually. But until then, it's lots of fun. Episodic pharmacological delirium is no laughing matter, young lady. In the town graveyard, I'm afraid. Poor man was always searching for the flower of enlightenment. On the way, he tried some... Rather daring substance combinations. It's a philosophist symbol of some kind, dearie. Never you mind. The graveyard's near the southern ruins. 
You're certainly welcome to pay our respects, but the bodies tend to attract beasties. Do be careful. I'd hate for anything to happen to you, dearie. Chin up, dearie. I'll keep it down. Rap mask and cane. Dies right here. Ah, the Charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? Says someone who's never had any fun. Exactly. See? I'm glad someone on your crew's got some sensi sensible... got her head on straight. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. That was fast. I gotta see about stalking some on the ship. You be careful. The first one's free. After that, they'll offer you gainful employment. Great. 
Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. Mighty big gun you got there. I'm looking forward to seeing you use it. A ship? Well, look at you. I'll find a spot there to call my own for now. Find me when you're ready. Well, well. The only new folk I ever see in town are sublight runners from Fallbrook. But you don't look like one of Catherine's. What can I get you? If you don't see it, I don't got it. Don't go asking for the special reserve.
Do your part to support the local economy? Laws know we need it. What can I get you? All sales are final, unless you threaten me. I'm kidding, don't threaten me. Thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. It's more dissolving than melting. That is not helpful. Oh, I just knew you were a good person. Agnes, I said, this is the man to save your little Tucky. And I was right. He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Oh, law, Captain. A youngster won't last long in a place like this. Please, can't we help? Please, won't you go and find my boy? He's been pining for an adventure, says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him, a raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know one's ripped his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the Iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No! And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already! That old settlement, southwest of Stellar Bay. I don't know which is worse, the thought of my son shacking up with the nutty iconoclasts. Or that he never made it. Sprats could be nesting in his rotting body alongside the road as we speak. Or, or maybe Marauders got him, pulled all his teeth out, crushed him into their drugs and made him snort him. Oh, the things that could happen to my sweet baby. Thank you. Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it that far. I just know it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouths. Tell them what I think of them luring little boys away from their mamas. It's immoral. cabin on one of my first ships. You reckon the smell ever goes away? 
Maybe the wind off the sea helps. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now. Who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Alcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltuna. Yes, that's it. Channel your anger. I only wish I could do the same. <laughs> Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic disappointments. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but... It seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Exactly what I would have said, if I'd been paying attention. You talk like Graham. Freedom always sounds nice, doesn't it? It makes a rather pretty slogan. But if you sit down and tally up the costs, how you provide for yourself in the absence of aid, how you protect yourself from a hostile galaxy, it starts to lose its shine. Indeed. Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. But will that help the people here, Mr. Sanjar? Keep them fed and safe? That's precisely what I'm trying to do. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. 
If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. Never realized fighting the bureaucracy could be this interesting. It is quite the rush. An ordinance, of course. We do things in a civilized fashion here. Not like Graham's iconoclasts. There's nothing the board likes so much as paperwork. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you just crawled out from under a rock. Forms and procedures are everything in Halcyon. And this one is located in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some... dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix the thing his own self, and busted it even worse, and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough, so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptid on acid. Laws, no! Sometimes it's canid teeth. Or a mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. I couldn't. What if he says no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I, I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. Good to have standards, I guess. I know what I'm looking for. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away.
Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. I don't know. Celia usually buys whatever I have, and Mr. Pickett seemed real interested. So I thought maybe I was onto something. Mr. Pickett? Franklin Pickett from Edgewater? That's him. He'd been here years. But he always talked about going back to Edgewater one day. Sure. Mr. Pickett used to run the community center outside Edgewater. He had this grand idea to make it a museum for Halcyon life. As my dad told it, Mr. Pickett was always going on about getting a Manta Queen for the last display. He left the Vale, gosh, years ago. He came to Stellar Bay years ago, just before the board cut us off. Ended up stuck here. He was always real interested in our monsters. Manta Queens, especially. Sure, they're real big. Hard to miss them. Well... I could send you to the same place I sent Mr. Pickett, but I haven't seen him in a few weeks. To tell true, I'm starting to get a bit worried about him. Captain, can we look for him? I'd feel awful if somebody from home was in trouble and we didn't do nothing. Tell you what, I'll tell you where I sent Mr. Pickett if you promise to look for him. Help him out if he's got himself in trouble. Fair deal? Thanks, Captain. All right then, leave town through the southern gate, the one right here, and head past the abandoned ruins. Last Mana Queen I saw was in the wilds out that ways. Could be Mr. Pickett still out there too. Huh, I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that raptid on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Nice of you to say. I like her too. And I gotta admire anyone with her passion for canid hides. But you don't have to butter me up. Now I see what Celia was talking about. This guy almost reminds me of Erion. Who? An old acquaintance from the Groundbreaker. Real piece of work. That's mighty kind of you to say. But we were talking about what a lucky gal Celia is. Anyone who can afford such a fine collection of mantisaur claws has it pretty good. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Oh, no, that's not it at all. She's smitten with you. You smited her. Smote? Smoot? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Give her a chance. Give yourself a chance. Take her someplace nice. Okay. I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. That's the spirit, Sebastian. Be yourself. Between you and me, Captain, I'm not sure Miss Celia knows him too well. But we can hope, right? I want them to be happy. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you.
smells like those old Sundays when we'd unload salt tuna shipments at the cannery. Am I the only one getting hungry?
Think they left anything good behind? I wonder who used to live here. Do you suppose anyone remembers anymore? Nice and easy.
Well, hello, and welcome to the home of the Iconoclasts. I'm Rose. Please, take a pamphlet. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophist truths, and the Iconoclast way. He wrote it himself, you know. Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting. We're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it. Why, we're the only free people in Halcyon. No corporations, no shackles, no problems. Oh, those are just hurdles. We deal with them as they come. You're welcome to stay with us, so long as you can earn your keep. The new boy! Yes, he's quite clever. He took to our teachings very quickly. Last I saw him, he was headed into one of the buildings up the hill. Ugh, my stomach. Seems like a nice little town. Except for all the dead critters. It ain't right. How many good folk are gonna lose to our missions? That's just the way of it. Manta Queen. Yeah, we felled it, mind. But we lost two runners and five gun hands. A total failure, then. So much for the ruins. And hell only knows where the Van Oys are. They never showed. I'm sure they're... Ah, let's talk later. It seems we have company. A stranger comes to our home. If you're looking for a path to walk, you've found one. If you're looking for a teacher, I am one. Welcome to the Iconoclasts. Ah, yes. The first step to accepting the truths of philosophism is to open your heart to its wisdom. 
I've found the written word to be quite effective in helping people do that. But alas, the eternal truth hasn't been generous with the paper and ink. Now, why have you come? The iconoclasts are free folk. We live under our rules, motivated by our own beliefs, all petals on the same flower of enlightenment. Meanwhile, the board strangles the will of its workers. It is the penultimate exercise of a poisoned society where people are enslaved by a corporate ladder. We seek to replace their way of life with ours. Philosophism is the key to unlocking their shackles. Oh, yes. Gunships hover in our skies, ready for the day they decide to come to our doors waving banners of war. The perception of visionaries is often tainted by the lies of their oppressors. A sad state of affairs, to be sure. All right. Awakening is available to all whose minds are ready to accept it. What would you like to know? Ah, the Eternal. We are all part of the consciousness of the cosmos. Each of us plays a tiny role in the universe's continual journey toward understanding itself. You and I, and the rats and the mantis swarms, divinity is in us all, and the Eternal is that divinity. Everyone, regardless of ability to believe, is another facet of the universe contemplating its own existence. Not in the sense of a single entity, fashioning the universe as a whittler fashions a flute. The universe came into being over time, organically, naturally, and without purpose. In that sense, I suppose you could say that in the interest of finding its purpose, the universe itself created all living things. Questions like these are distractions. It doesn't matter whether an entity sparked the universe or not. Only by pursuing the eternal truth will we find these and other answers. All right. Why have you come? A great many things, in fact. We could always use a hand rounding up supplies. Or... Now here's an idea. There's an old printing press I've been trying to get up and running. Oh yes, many facilities lie abandoned in the wilderness. I believe the press could be operational again with a little elbow grease and luck. Sounds to me like a nifty little challenge. Such enthusiasm, yes. I agree wholeheartedly, our own little fixer-upper. Will you aid us in our cause? Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. What are you doing wasting bits on... Wait, where is Huxley? It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. One of our sympathizers, a woman named Carlotta, periodically buys goods on our behalf from Stellar Bay's store. Stellar Bay has caught on, but they remain friendly, though the goods now come at a considerable markup. She meets us in the ruins of Bayside Terrace, from our compound, follow the road north. Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges? Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but if there is extra money, would you mind buying... 
I don't know, food and medicine? Graham, if you need me, I'll be in triage. Looks like I'm not the only new face around here. What do I call you, stranger? Oh, come on. We like to be friendly around here. At the least, let me call you captain. Whether or not you command a ship, if you've found your way here, you must be a leader type. So then, captain, welcome to Amber Heights. Oh, and uh, call me Tucker. You here to join the Iconoclasts? Help us free this world? I am not a little boy. Haven't been one for decades, no matter what my mama wishes. I take it she's still looking for me? Had hoped she'd accept my decision. According to her, stepping foot outside of the house in broad daylight is too dangerous. My entire life she crammed a fear of danger down my throat. Don't go play with friends. Bantasaurs will tear your arms off. Don't leave the city. Raptodons will spit acid on your face. Marauders can violate you. You'd fall in a sulfur pool. I stuck around way too long, ruled by her fears. I'm 42 years old, but she still sees me as a little boy in need of her protection. I won't stand for it, I tell you. Show up with a bottle of vodka and some real good cusses. That'll show her how much you've grown. Then she'll think they've brainwashed me into some kind of hooligan. As far as she's concerned, if I make any decision that's not aligned with hers, someone else convinced me. She doesn't want to see me as anything other than her baby boy. Why would I go back again? What'll be different this time? You're right. I can do this. I just need to stand my ground and make her see she can't control me anymore. No one can.
All I'm saying is it ain't worth it. It's gonna taste like sulfur all the